I really thought we'd never have to see this car again. Get the hell out of my yard. <laughs> hey, squatter's rights. We paid for a bus to sleep in. We're going to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today you join myself, Dalton, Angus, and Angus's Impala from a recent previous video of Junkyard Digs right where we left it in Missouri. And today we're going to take the 350 in the trunk, put it under the hood, and try to make it all the way home. Dalton! Hello. How, how are you today? Dalton Pole Barn Garage, if you somehow didn't know. I'm well. Uh, you know, I woke up to this yellow bus in my yard with two strange men in it, but... The only part that changed is now there's two strange men in it. <laughs> You're right. Angus. Hi. Are you ready for this again? Uh, not especially, but I guess I have nothing else going on. If you guys don't recognize this car, this is a car that we bought in Texas for a few hundred bucks. Angus drove it all the way from Texas with the intents to make it home, and it did not. The little 3.8 inside. Pretty much gave up on life halfway here, but we uh, forced it to not have a choice anymore and made it all the way to here. You know, sometimes when you buy a car and there's like a lot of fluids in it, you could tell there might be a problem. Did I hear he wants I, I to buy the car? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I just think... I, I might have remembered something. I didn't think we'd have to come back here. I'm so sorry. How is the coolant so green? I would imagine there would be oil in it at least. Yeah, well, we, no, it didn't have sure. enough pressure to push it into the cooling system. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we start off with a battery. Uh, we laid this on the floor until it popped last time. I remember it seizing, I think. Uh, there's a twice. There's a good chance we throw this in and it spins again. Probably. It'll either drive into the shop right now or not spin at all and it's done forever. It's probably cooled off in the last three months. <laughs> all right, Angus, let's see if she's stuck. Oh, that, works. that works fine. Oh, I can hear it knocking now. It's knocking at cranking speed. Oh. <laughs> Neutral drop that son of a bitch. I did. Oh, is that wide open? Oh. What was that? Was it a rod? I don't know. It shook the car. Give him a push! It's doing it! I think he's still wide open. I believe he is. <laughs> you can do it! Hold out! Um. <laughs> well, we can power wash it now. I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> Here's the plan. That right there is a small block Chevy that came with the car. Got a set of headers for probably a truck. I don't know. Valve covers, tire iron, and an old distributor without the top half of it. We're going to take that and put it on the other end of the car and drive this the rest of the way home and complete that adventure from Texas. Just do the little swap a roof. Should be a lot better now. Instead of 65 horsepower, you might have 82. Exactly. It's already built. It's got the blue stuff on it. <laughs> Did they say it was a 350 or a 305? I don't remember. I'm going to bet that, oh, it says 5.0. I'm going to go with a, it's a 305. Oh, where do we start? Pressure wash it and then cry? Or do we cry first and then pressure wash? I think the crying was finished in the last episode. Oh, so. it wasn't. I'm going to continue <laughs> crying. Let me just go ahead and spot one of my sponsors on your channel here. Oh, yeah, they don't, they don't send us anything. Oh. 
<laughs> it's best to dual wield, you see. Mm. Oh, you just Whoa. let her rip. Yeah. Oh, and it, it burns real bad, but... <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> you can get over the burning. Right to the face. <coughs> it's good stuff, man. I would only suggest dual wielding if you have a sponsored element that is giving you cleaning some supplies. I pay for mine. I like to go one jug at a time. <laughs> it was supply and super clean. Yes, yeah, so I will <laughs> use it as well. Oh, downwind! I'm downwind! Since it's time to spraying this in your eyes. Did you get some down in the in the carb? I think there's some oil in there I want to get rid of. Well, yeah. Make sure you get it good. Down. Let your carb runneth over. Fresh carb rebuild. After letting the degreaser sit for a while, we busted out the pressure washer and battled our way through the intensely thick Texas grease. Once that was done, we winched it inside Dalton's shop, took the hood off, and got ready to rip the motor out. As is tradition, we've started by draining the coolant, which, as is tradition, we forgot to do outside. And, as is tradition, being a southern car, if you'll notice, the heater core is not hooked up. The drain plug is completely out. The radiator is still half full. And there is fluid merely trickling out the bottom. So I'm gonna go on a limb and say the radiator is probably completely plugged. How close is the nearest summit racing? Oh, you don't need summit racing. You have Dalton's backyard. He's probably got three radiators for How this. How close is the nearest Dalton's backyard? <laughs> hey, there's a bunch of grass in this radiator. So this is a small block Chevy with two middle cylinders cut out, right? Yep. Well, I wonder if the engine location is the same. Which would explain the really long shroud, right? Yeah. Add two cylinders. So maybe they just, every engine's located in the same spot. Hopefully that small block just sits in. That's what, shaft works. Every that's day. what I would design if I was a Chevy engineer back but in the day. If I had to do it on paper. In 1984. Yeah. So you're doing a lot of coke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that intake. That engine's really speaking its feelings right now. It looks like I did most of the time we were driving. <laughs> All right. Everything up here is done. Angus is down there taking our mounts and stuff off for the trans. We're going to pull the whole thing as one kebab. Just throw those in the old bolster. I am very excited to see you have those as well. Oh, bolsters are great. These are fantastic. Check them out, bolster.com. They're silicone mat that is chemical resistant, warranted, and heat resistant. You can tell I use the hell out of that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. goddamn size is this? <laughs> I was about to say, hey, Angus, how are things? Pretty good. You know, I love this car. You want me to get your bear blanket for you? Yes. Yay. Oh, you know what I forgot? I bet the trans is dumping everywhere. I can yes, hear it. Yes, it is. Oh, let's get the pan. Panic. Panic. <laughs> yep, there it is. Sorry, Dalton. I'm not. <laughs> With that taken care of, we worked on ripping the driveline all the way out of the car. I think if we just learned something. These two spark plug wires were completely chewed through. These two cylinders were never firing. <laughs> There's just like three inches of it that's gone. Angus, there we have it. We did it! The V6 is out of the car. Now we will take this back outside, pressure wash the engine bay again, pull the 305 out of the trunk and prep it to go into the car for that transmission. After another hour with the pressure washer and the degreaser, we had a clean engine bay and a mostly clean transmission. Hey, question. What the hell is that? We thought it would be a 200 R4. This is a Turbo 350C. It's a lock-up. C? Yeah, so Whoa. it has a modulator valve. Which is the giveaway for a Turbo 350. Correct, because right? it uses engine vacuum to determine the line pressure. Instead of a TV cable. Uh, but it has a lock-up converter. So it uses like a little speed sensor, I think, right? And that that goes off the rooster comb, so it'll lock up and drive. So you kind of have an overdrive. Huh. But it's uh, it's just, just a lock-up converter. Mm -hmm. AI yeah, like 80, 81, I think first year for that. They didn't run them very long. Before we hauled the V6 off to scrap, we wanted to pop the heads off and see what was going on inside this engine and what was causing all the blow-by. <laughs> I got hit over here. <laughs> <laughs> now that's more what I was anticipating. So it smells. It used to be what the inside of the valve cover looked like, but then it all blow out. Hey, there's a rock in there. Give me the head. Give it to me. Got it. Oh, oh no! We figured it out. We're the world's greatest detectives. Look at that piston. Where's the rest of the piston? The whole corner of the piston is gone. No, nah, that's all right. Oh yeah, it's super pitted. I mean, She's seen some action. It exploded. It's got a hell of a ring ridge for some reason. Just right there? Yeah. You can see where the ring ridge is a different shape right there. 
This guy sold us a bad motor. I can't believe it. Can you believe, believe that? <laughs> well, I mean, she's got the pop-up pistons in her uh, three-quarter cam. and uh, Three-quarter of a cam. Three-quarters of a cam. <laughs> Coke cam. Insane. I can't believe this still ran. That's where all the compression was coming from. Yeah. That's, that's that literally why all the blow-by. Yeah, shit. Yep. Yeah, so my brother had a, a 40 Jeep in high school, and it had a hole in a piston just like that. And it would just blow. I mean, it's crazy blow by. He also had an oil can rigged up oh, on really? it to so catch. Like, same exact scenario. Pretty much, just an inline version. <laughs> I've never, I'd never run into that before. Yeah. With that much blow by, so now I guess we know that's broken piston territory. Yeah. Oh, well, these ones look great. Fine. Yeah, this thing just had a dead hole. That looks better than I would have ever guessed. Oh my god. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking that's mostly carbon, but there's the biggest yeah. ring ridge I've ever felt in my life. Feel this. It's like, get the tape measure out. Oh, jeez. That's, that's, that's like seven or eight thou on each side, so that's 14 thou oversized. <laughs> Holy shit. If you don't know what that means, that's point zero. This is a four liter. Four. Crazy, oh, crazy. Head gaskets were actually just fine. Oh, by the way. If you ever have a motor that you do everything you can and it still runs hot, these right here can rush through like that one and they get really big like that big. What these are supposed to do is force the coolant all the way to the back of the block where it then can come through and flow back to the front. If these rust through up here, the coolant can return just right here and the back of the block does not get enough flow and the whole motor is going to run warm. Well, let's get that other motor in here and get her cleaned up ready to go in tomorrow morning. Oh yeah, I forgot that's why we were doing this. After some well thought out shuffling, we were able to get the engine out of the back of the car and into Swanee, the occasional farm truck, Big Block Chevy, which by the way, if you never noticed on Dalton's channel is an acronym. We then snuck the truck in front of the car and unloaded the engine where we could install it the next morning. <laughs> Let's get her painted up and ready to go in tomorrow morning. Morning. Is it? I didn't say good, I just said morning. Oh. Thank God we have our own house here. Yeah, sure is nice. Well, good kinda. floor. Great floor. We started our morning off with a bit of cleaning and painting to get things going. As is tradition at the pole barn. Full, Full restoration. restoration. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it worth doing if you're not overdoing it, right? So full restoration. That's right. I don't half-ass anything. Once we got the motor cleaned up, we took advantage of Dalton's indentured servant, or I mean his son. Either way, we gave JD a can of paint and turned him loose towards the engine. Dalton, I gotta say, your boy's pretty good at rebuilding motors. Yeah, what's he got? About 10 minutes in that one? Yeah, new valves, Ooh. rings, pistons, all of it. Board 30 over. Fastest this side of the Mississippi right there. Hottest 305 you've ever seen. My uncle daddy had one and a Nova. Pop coke can. <laughs> double, hump, double hump heads, flat top pistons. Mm -hmm. Pop-ups. 850 double humper. Three quarter ready can. With the rattle can rebuild done, we cleaned up all the threads and decided to do an oil change before sticking everything back together. <laughs> there was an audible thud. <laughs> 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 This motor's gonna be great. Oh, boy, you pick them. Oh, well, no, it's going now. It's going. Oh, yes. oh my god. It keeps giving birth. The trunk 305 is just, it completes the story, you know? We carried it all the way up here. We gotta use it. I'd use it to make some beer cans. With the oil change done, we mated the engine to the transmission and went to the car back inside. Go ahead and pick that up. Throw it on in there, boys. All right. You, you grab the back end. So. In the uh, mid-80s that was this car, GM had a bunch of engine options. As you can see, there's a ton of holes. You could get the 231 V6 Buick, the 229 V6 Chevy, which is what this had, a 305, a 350, a 57 diesel, probably a 307 Olds in the Oldsmobile version of this car. A ton of different engines that all had different mounting options. So, to say the least, it looks like someone went at this with a drill bit and a whole bunch of enthusiasm. With that being said, we have our old mounts off, and as you can see, they sat way back there. And our new mounts, which we just went down to O'Reilly's and got a set of 305 engine mounts for the 84 Impala, this car. And they should go on those forward holes right there because the engine needs to move forward about five inches. 
Yeah, right there. So there's, there's your about five inches. So yeah, two bolts on top, one down there when the hole lines up in the corner. And this will be converted, ready to accept a 350. As far as we know. Or a 305, without hopefully changing anything else in the whole car. It took a little bit due to the weird geometry, but we were able to get the bolts in the engine mounts and we're ready to drop the motor in. Bring it all in. Watch out! No! No! no. <laughs> we gotta pull the tail shaft thing out, but it's like, there it is. <laughs> oh, I don't even have to edit around that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's right, man. Oh my god! Uh, he needs a pan. Notice. Here's the extra full pan. I'm from the government, I'm here to help. No. Oh, that's terrifying. No? Down, one go. No, one go. no, 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 no. no. I have perished. I have perished. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, but that is the end of Dalton Summit. <laughs> if you would like to replace him on the channel, shoot us an email at I am better than Dalton Summit at junkyarddigs.com. <laughs> Alright, we're in the trans. Let's drop her onto the motor mounts up front. I'm getting out of here. Drop it. Uh. Did that do it? Hey, there it is. Oh, jeez, it landed right in the spot. Almost Perfect. like you tried it 17 times. And First know. try. First try, supersized extra fries. All right, anyway. there we go. She's in. Now all we have to do is hook up everything else. Oh, that's all? Good morning, sir. Yes, it is. It is morning. Today is hopefully the final day of working on the Apollo down here in Missouri, and then we can hit the road and head north this afternoon. And then we'll work on it there. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you want to start? Well, I think the most important thing is that we have each other. <laughs> Great, thanks. <laughs> I was going to say exhaust. Oh. <laughs> we don't have V8 manifolds, right? Dalton doesn't have any either. These came with the car when we bought it, right? Yeah, he put the engine in the trunk. And I said, hey, do you have any accessories for this just in case we have to swap this? And he was like, oh, yeah, I got some accessories. And he gave us some boxes. Like, you wouldn't have to have any manifolds or headers, would you? And he was like, eh. And he walked behind a barn. And in a pile of scrap, he pulled out a set of headers that look roughly the same level of garbage. So there's no way in hell these fit. No, no way. These are probably for a truck. Oh my god. Is that it? That lines up perfectly up here. How are you? I got tons of clearance. Oh, that's incredible. These fit perfect. Are you kidding? <laughs> what? Nice. <laughs> Something I just noticed, thank god, this header was completely full of mud dauber nests. And they were totally packed in there to the point where this would have never been able to breathe. They're still in there. I can't get the other one out. I'm trying to get the one I could see to come out and like three more fell out. Hey, look at that. Just slam packed solid. So yeah, I guess if you buy used headers, double check that. I've never seen that before. That is crazy. Look at all these big chunks that are coming out of this. I thought I had these all clear. All four of them were slammed plugged. Damn. There's another one. Look at that. Just huge chunks of mud. This thing would have never started. We would have been so confused and never figured it out. More! What the hell? With the exhaust figured out, we started working on things such as wiring, accessories, and getting a starter underneath the car. All right, there we go. New starter's in place. Had to get a new one because this engine uses the large flex plate. The uh, 305 that would have came in this car and the V6 uses a smaller one. So the starter set for their inbound. So we had to get like a truck starter of the era. And she went right on. Put our inspection cover on, our other header in place, and we're good to go under here. Alrighty, we've got the headers on. Angus is still fighting, getting that side tightened up. It's a fun time. It's so much fun. This is our, well, our modified bracket from what used to hold the AC and the power steering. Now I've got it cut down so it fits just the power steering because it used to go to both sides of that header on the manifold. Now we have tubes. So we're having to modify some stuff to make that happen. We need a spacer right there. And I think Dalton has a particular socket. He's decided he doesn't need it anymore. We're gonna cut it down and try to make that work. 
Hey, remember three weeks ago when I said something about don't lose your AC brackets or modify them because <laughs> you might need it again? Unless it's one of these cars, <laughs> then you can get rid of it. It doesn't matter then. If you're not intending to drive the shit out of this in the summer. and If, if you don't if intend to keep the car, it doesn't matter. Do you not intend to keep the car? Oh, I, I intend to keep it I right up until I run it into a lake. <laughs> There's a lake right there. I didn't say I was going to keep it for long. I didn't know we were in a full-on machine shop. Well, I'm kind of a fabricator. Uh, <laughs> that's It's got a slight uphill grade. Good, we can use that to straighten the brother bracket out. It's really hot. <laughs> God! <laughs> I was wondering how you were doing that. <laughs> well, that's the most bullshit I've done in quite some time that's worked that well. We have half of a socket, a random spacer, a nut, a bolt. A carriage bolt, a lock washer. See, that's that's the that extra step. And then, of course, a nut, some washers and shit back here. And in the end, all that matters is those line up really well, and this can be adjusted somewhat. A little, a little. Either way, while I was doing that, Dalton set us up with a uh, heater core hose there to loop that all together. Thank you, sir. Oh, that looks excellent. Yeah. I see the three kinks have turned into one while uh, I was I, sitting. I massaged it a little. Oh, good. Relax. Good. Well, getting close to wrapping things up. What do you think, Angus? About here? Yeah, it looks about right. Perfect. Uh, I, I like pinwheels. <laughs> it feels a little strong in there, buddy. <laughs> Is it a nice? It's something. Oh, thanks. My favorites. Pretty good. Yep, looks good. Send it. She just self tapper in that. And that is how you adapt the V6 shroud to hold a random radiator from the shed. <laughs> There's very little that you cannot do with a sawzall and a handful of self tappers. This came off of uh, something. Oh, it'll run great on here. Yeah, sure. Put that 850 right on that 305. Uh, Done. Nailed it. All right, turn the key. See what it does. Okay. Who's got bets? How long is it going to last? End of the driveway? All the way home? Throws a rod on Which start up? I think it'll get inconveniently far into town. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. one where we can't push it. Like a four-way stop. Like yeah. an on-ramp. Middle of a four-way stop. <laughs> Man, we really achieved kind of an uncanny valley with this engine bay. Like, everything's shiny and painted, but it's just still ugly as hell. It's pretty standard. I mean, it really doesn't stand out. <laughs> I can help that. Oh. <laughs> wow! It needs some color. That's some color. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, I'm a big fan. It matches your flag. As it turns out, this wasn't the end of Dalton's jokes. In fact, earlier he had raided the O'Reilly's clearance section for the cringiest stickers he could find. Oh yeah, brother. Yeah. Skull. Oh, oh yeah. Angus is using the bathroom. Yeah. Skull. Oh, gross. <laughs> oh, they feel gross. I spent fifty dollars on skulls to put on his car. That's terrible. That's commitment. <laughs> the cringe pala. The cringe pala. I never knew Angus was into Harley's. I don't think he did either until now. Well, until a little bit from now. If the springs are squeaking, don't come peeking. That, that's a nice addition since the last time. Oh yes, yes. Oh, oh shit. Just let it, let it cure a yeah. little. Let her, let her really sit. Brother. Oh, brother. Brother. Hey, how's your poop? Hey. hey. Uh, skull yeah, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I gotta get a Harley. I am now into skulls and somebody, my 10 millimeters running away. Oh, and I've got squeaky springs too. Rude. <laughs> Oh, good. There's more on the side. <laughs> well, it's it's not making the car look worse. I'll be really honest. How does it hit the fan shroud now, but it did it before? It's a different motor. It's further forward, so it's higher uphill, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Huh. Well, just start it. It'll self clearance. <laughs> it certainly will. Well, I, just start it. Well, it's not gonna. I mean, it's not gonna catch on the fan clutch. That's for sure. <laughs> so I mean, it'll be. The fan will spin. <laughs> Take the sawzall. Man. 
See, and then you just notch that around. That so way we don't have any of this anymore, so that sticker needs to go away. It, well, I mean, you don't it, want anything enveloping your fan. Because you know, <laughs> no. then it, it might interfere with the air. Yeah. <laughs> you want right. that air to go... <laughs> you don't want to shroud it, I guess I should say. <laughs> no, that'd be terrible. All right, goodbye, nice things that we had. Hop in there and hit the key. Let's see what happens. Absolutely. So you want to lay bets now? I mean, what do you got on flat cam, rod knock? Missing piston. Wrist pin. Probably another broken piston. It would just be poetic, really. <laughs> just just blow by. <laughs> I bet we put it in backwards. <laughs> It was a rear mount engine before. Watches its reverse rotation. It's a boat motor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hit it. Oh, well, dead battery was not on my list, but should have been. Yeah. Okay, get the battery charger as is tradition. Let me tell you, son. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I got a battery. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a little maintenance to it, but. Uh, <laughs> Not only is it broken, it doesn't work. Look, look, I've had this for a long time. It still, it still works. Ready? Yep. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. All right, let's get that fixed. Here, have this one out of this Chinesium distributor I found. What an upgrade. I'm so excited. It's made by Mobiltron. <laughs> Apparently I've missed some stuff in the recent uh, installments of Transformers. <laughs> well, you I know, haven't heard of the Mobiltrons yet. It's off-brand. <laughs> it's the ones we could afford when we were kids. <laughs> what brand? All good? Well, it would be if I had put the rotor in it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Dang it. Not again. I looked at it the whole time I was putting the cap on. I'm like, there's something wrong here. You can't find good help these days. No, <laughs> New HCI module and a rotor. Yeah, spark. Hey, she even fired. Starter shims are real happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess two wasn't the answer. Yeah. See, nothing squirting. But this car was just sitting in yeah. my... You know. Could very well be that it's junk or uh, <laughs> the accelerator pump doesn't work. Yeah, maybe a smack or two might be good for it. Oh, here. Ready? It's not. It's either not pumping or not picking up fuel. Where is it? It's a, it's in the trash. We have a trash. Uh, the recycling, I mean, because okay, we recycle. Three hundred and sixty degrees. Which trash? <laughs> <laughs> the one over here. Trash can. Like French. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. All right, cool. Now let's hook it up. Ah, come on, baby. All right, we took a second, pulled our filter out. It's gone now. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it had this thing in the end, and this thing's all seized up and goofed up and wasn't allowing anything past it so took the whole thing out should run all right all Absolutely, I've been getting pelted is that with debris. Is that what's all over your face and in my beer? Yes. It didn't was, sound too bad, it didn't smoke, no. no tick. I didn't hear anything besides open headers, so I heard the worst noise ever from the <laughs> fan, and and that was it. So yeah, it's it hit, sounds great, let's hit the road. <laughs> hey, it's hitting on all eight. All right, well there, we know it runs. Let's finish things up underneath. We need an exhaust, because none of us can hear each other right now. What? All right, Dalton's exhaust shop. What yep. you got out back? We got a couple of turbo mufflers here. Uh, got one Flowmaster 10. Ooh. We got a glass pack there. The other glass packs around the other side. Oh, well, hell, we only got to carry one of them? Yep. I vote glass pack. Okay, here we go. Mm. Custom exhaust. 
free of charge. All right, let's see. We got two different sizes because we're cheap and we love this car so little. <laughs> we think this might just fit in what was on the header. Oh yeah. Oh, it might. It might be loose. <laughs> nope. Perfect. Is it perfect? It is Hang perfect. On. We got a piece of flex pipe to get around the crossman on this side. Oh yeah, it's gonna slip right in. We gotta take the burrs off, but we can put the entire exhaust on with three U-bolts. Nice. Three exhaust clamps, that's it. And then two hangers. All right, let's do it. Time to fire up the old metal glue machine. I can't see anything. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> Remember to get you a better extension cord to run your shop off of for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it smell like black cat bottle rockets? Wow. That wire was on sale. I can tell. Yeah, there. It's stuck. Done. It's glued. Personally, I love welding near this lake of transmission fluid. Oh, never mind that. The whole car is covered exclusively in oil underneath from the trip up. So <laughs> the fact that the whole thing didn't just go off like a candle wick. Pretty impressive. All right, let's go screw up the other side so it falls off as well. Once the exhaust was finished, we fired up the car to see how she sounded. This is the worst auto repair shop I've ever taken a car to. God, you said that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> what? Fuck! What was that? Something fell into the fan and you almost died. It's on the ground there. It was black. Is it this washer right here? No, it's bigger. It's like this big. I bet it was a coolant. Jug cap. It was. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Good news. Been filling up the coolant. Good news. You lived. All right, let's try it again. I mean, the exhaust is the exhaust. Yeah, this, this part sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. good. Clearly we have a little tuning to do here, but we're gonna knock that out quick. We're gonna see if this sucker will pull out of the garage under its own power with a V8 for the first time in its whole life. Would you like to wear the bear costume or me? Uh, it's all you, Angus. You know what, I think you'll just sit in the middle. This is a six seater, we have a bench seat. <laughs> Buckle up, Mr. Bear. We shouldn't, we should be able to run from this thing as fast as possible. Contact! So far, so good. What do you think, straight into the pond, or do they pause before they go into the pond? They pause. Oh, okay. Might have a little work to do yet. Yeah. This reminds me a lot of when it was a V6. <laughs> attempts is going to take them to turn around successfully Did without stalling. Twice. Because he's going to roll back and he's going to shove it in the drive. Oh, true. Oh, get that hog ass cam this thing is. Oh, yeah. Oh, all seven cylinders, maybe. <sighs> That's the cam. <laughs> oh, there's one stall. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Two stalls. Oh. You're winning. This reminds me a lot of when it last <laughs> drove in the driveway. <laughs> Right about here, actually, yeah. Yes! Whoa! Yep, oh, you got oh, it. Nice. Two fails, good yeah. job. Go in the yard with the shitty. Noted.
some odd. Are you saying 200 degrees isn't normal? Uh, it's less than optimal. You're trying to tell me that 200 degrees is hot. What? Well, it says, Gage says 200 degrees, but that was worth the fun. It was, it was a lot of fun watching grass fly out of the hood. <laughs> <laughs> it runs. Deal with that tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah, we will on the way home. All the way home. <laughs> Certainly deal with it at some point. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's exactly the same as. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now you got two more cylinders to fail. Right, great. Right. Yeah, I still have to neutral drop it. It has no more power. It's the same. It's better. Here we are, walking off into the darkness in lieu of making an engine run somewhat better. Rumor has it here in the absolute black abyss that is the screen right now. Somewhere there is a van with a quadrajet sitting on the floor. <gasps> a clue! <laughs> Another clue! Aha! Welcome to my humble abode. <laughs> this is even worse than ours. Ooh, there. A quadrajunk. Oh, okay. Let's save ourselves the time and check the throttle chassis seals. The thing that kills them all. Ooh, that's pretty bad. You can hear it, yeah. I mean, we could try it. Maybe it's maybe it's okay with it. How's she look inside? Where's Arguably some... better. Let's give it a try. All right. Van carburetor full of transmission fluid. Take one. <laughs> it's going to take a bit to get that trans fluid out. <laughs> Go at idle. Perfect. <laughs> Angus, give it a stab. Good to go. Well, I think we're ready to hit the road in the morning. Hell no. <laughs> Good. I'm super ready. <laughs> this is gonna be a bear of a drive. Shut up. <laughs> Good morning, Angus. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't feel my toes. It's a little cold in the old bus today. I have five blankets on right now. <laughs> yep. Nope. This sucks. What do you say we finish the car and get the hell out of here? What do you say we go inside and warm up and then finish the car and go home? <laughs> Man, our engineering genius really knows no bounds. We are masters at our craft. So, we were minding our own business this morning. Well, meaning me. I was preparing myself for a cold journey. When Kevin had the audacity to point at this thing and go, I wonder if the heater core is plugged or if it's just fine. And he blew through it. Coolant came out. Perfectly green coolant. That means it was level full the whole time. Which means it probably didn't leak. And it much. definitely flows. So with that, we're going to hook this back up and see if the heater core was just fine all along. And Angus could have had heat all the way from Texas. And we can have heat all the way to Iowa. The blower motor still doesn't work. Mm -mm. But it'll make us feel better. We're here again. <laughs> here we go again. All right, the car. Time to start. Oh, yeah, she's warm. She's happy. Yeah, what a good automobile. Did a little more tune in this morning. Got it to uh, not die as much in park, so that's good. Or in drive. The torque converter is way too tight. We should have used a different one. Hindsight. Wham in the gear. Doesn't slip at all. It's ready. Oh, down the, the ground. is not ready. <laughs> The exhaust might be a little bit low. Oh, it touch. didn't touch. It's going. It's doing it quite well. Holy shit, you got two of us in here now, so don't kill me. Oh. Do we have heat? It smells like it's got Oh my god, there's heat! We could have fixed that the whole time, sorry. <laughs> well, but hey, now you have Barry. You Barry's here and Barry's not going to be so cold. You would have never had Barry before if we fixed the heat. This road's going to be rough. Uh, find ourselves a seatbelt. Please work. Please God work. Uber convenient. Uh, USB plugs they wired in. I'm glad yeah. they did that. 
wish they would have fixed the taillights. I wish we would have fixed the taillights. Oh. We forgot all about that. <laughs> Shit. That's this like doesn't so have bad. insurance. No, it doesn't. Okay, first gas station, let's fill up and make it legal. We totally forgot. Getting some insurance on her. Yes. That's Please hurry up, Geico. There's a cop two stalls down. That's probably a good idea. Thankfully, right after Angus put insurance on, the cop walked over and asked why we didn't have license plates. We explained that we just got the car and we were headed back to Iowa, so he wished us luck and sent us on our way. It was the stickers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have 250 miles to go home. Let's do it. Our temperatures and pressures look pretty good. We're doing 65 ever this week for the first time ever. Yeah, it used to take everything to start having you this speed. It drives really nice, actually. And, and it's warm in here. It is remotely warm. Yes, it smells like it's warm. Yeah. Oh, it's not the window seals. The door seal is just completely absent. Just see it outside. That's fine. Yeah, it'll be all right. All right, give her. On the floor. That's okay. on the floor? That's on the floor. That's not open all the way. A throttle cable must not be working right, because nope. that's like half throttle. You know, I haven't really rode this thing before. It drives really nice. It's dead smooth. Oh yeah, not one vibration. That's kind of annoying. I know. We're hurtling down the road in this apparent death machine, and it's pretty just it's, fine. It's, it's okay. It's, it's just totally fine. power. Yeah. What do you think, Barry? Oh, Barry! Barry, no! Barry, no! Come back! He's building oh. in all the heat we have oh. now. <laughs> So far, things were going pretty well, so we put the hammer down and made our way north through Missouri. Great question. Yeah. Why do we never do these when it isn't 90 mile an hour winds outside? Well, that wouldn't make very good TV now, would it? I guess not. It's so damn windy, and it doesn't help we're doing like, I don't know, there's no needle for a second there. 10 billion. Somewhere between a lot and even more. How are we doing on fuel? Well, we've had a half tank the whole time, so either we're not using any, or the gauge doesn't work. I do believe Dalton has to pee, so we're going to pull off, and I think me and him are going to switch so he can come experience the glory that is the Impala. The noise that is the Impala? Yeah, it is loud in here. Mm, RPMs. <laughs> click, 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 click. Turn it back on, it's too quiet. My body's tingling. <laughs> oh, more. Oh. You. <laughs> you. <laughs> but hold on. <laughs> there we go. I have spent a substantial amount of money on this <laughs> prank. It's kind of getting out of hand, actually. Uh, <laughs> Now the really funny part, Dalton, it's your turn to ride with him. Oh shit. <laughs> Hit it, son. Blower motor. The blower motor is... Okay, anyway. Blower motor's fixed. Is the motor still running? It runs great. Uh, I have all the RPM. As long as we don't listen to the valve train. I can hear the lift in the air. Let's roll out. <laughs> this car sucks. It's really bad. Yeah. I wasn't deaf before, we're gonna be now. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> way worse than this one. <laughs> it's so bad. Imagine this but worse. Oh. Going up here. Yeah. At least you got power. Yeah, at least now we're going on speed and don't have to stop every 10 miles and fill the oil. <laughs> what do you think, Mr. Bear? I think it's a piece of shit! <laughs> <laughs> Despite Barry's opinion, the Impala continued to soldier on north as we made our way towards the Iowa border. Behold, the land of double D's. <laughs> Boobs. <laughs> Boobs. Pretty cool keychain, bro. Oh, what? What? I didn't even notice this. <laughs> Angus. Hi. I have just been informed by our glorious leader. We have got 100 miles. Wow. You covered 100 miles of this faster than you covered like 10 before. That's true. It proved really it. True. It's not even hot. It still has oil in it. Toot toot. Toot toot. Arguably getting marginally more windy. To deal with 
with the buffeting of the wind, we decided to go to the tried and true method of drafting down the interstate. Coming in closer in the rear. Just like last time we tried this, both cars settled right into their lane and were no longer getting pushed around by the wind. We stuck like this for a while until we eventually hit the Iowa border. I have just been informed that we've done 150 miles now. Wow! Good little car! What are your uh, plans for this thing when you get it home? I don't know, I mean, it's really awful, so what is there to change? Well, I kind of like a headlight, definitely like some seals. Headlighter would be good. Goals, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet they have that in like Joanne Fabrics. Oh yeah. You walk in, they'd are they'd be like, the skulls are over there, sir. Yep. Done. In my leather jacket with a skull in print, my yeah. chain wallet. Yeah. Rolling up in this beast. <laughs> so, do you think they have like skeleton hand mirrors that I can put on the oh, side here? Hell, still yes. doesn't work either. Yeah, skull door lock knobs too. Yeah, but that would be really cool because then everyone would know how badass you well, are. You know? I need them to know. <laughs> so they know that I don't mess around. I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> Eventually, we stopped for gas and to switch passengers one last time before the final leg home. Tickety tickety. Oh, smoky, smoky. Yeah, that's new. 82 miles left. That's it. That's oil. Yeah, I saw that when it came off the road. No, that's fuel. It's fuel. Fuel? Yeah. How is it fuel? Oh, although there is something pouring out of it. That's cool, huh? We'll just, uh, you know, top everything off, make yeah. it the last 82 miles, and then leave it in Angus's yard. Hell yes. Besides the cooling all over the place, I don't see anything immediately concerning. But I mean all over the place. Where did it come from? Uh, overflow? Is our radiator well it's not it's not overheating though we have a temp gauge right no it's nice and cool you, oh that's full no it's the 442 all over again Ew. <laughs> after topping off the fluids we set off on the interstate one more time eager to make it home interesting. very interesting steadily flat i've never seen it this high we're running out of coolant She's got air in it. I just lost it. Oh, there it goes again. Just jumping all over. We're running out of cooling. Seeing that we had an issue to resolve, we pulled off in Des Moines. They be having uh, issues. She be smoking. It do. Oh, boy. This feels familiar. Oh. That coolant coming out of the exhaust. It's got a bad head gasket. Oh, good. What's are brand new, supposedly. That's why your uh, overflow is. Uh, yep. Now knowing we had a bad head gasket, but we also only had like 50 miles to go, we refilled the radiator with the extra jug of water and blew the reservoir back into it to get as much coolant into the engine as we could. Okay. Uh, 40 miles left. Still make it. What a terrifying automobile. Yep. That ain't smoke, that's just coolant blowing out of one of the two exhausts. Go ahead, get that pesky coolant out of here. Remember how this had new head gaskets? I think they just re-gasketed a motor that had bad head gaskets because it probably had a cracked head or uh, has a warped head end block. It will get us home though. Probably. And it's better than the last one. Yeah, it is. We've been trying to get this home from Texas twice now and gone through two motors. <laughs> it needs another engine again. Bound and determined to get this thing home, we ignored all the signs and put the hammer down through Des Moines, headed towards Angus's house. The Impala refuses to travel down the road without a white cloud behind it. Don't buy a motor in Texas. Don't buy a car in Texas. Especially if it comes with a motor. Go in Texas. No, ooh, I like that one. I'm starting to think that this is what was wrong with the Oldsmobile the entire time. It has like a slight head gas in the cushion. Going out of the radiator. Yeah, which is weird that it didn't get. We were baffled worse. by it. Oh, we were completely confounded. Oh, it probably didn't get worse because it's probably a crack something. Oh, oh, that acts like a meter leak. Yeah. Ooh, good. Where this got continually worse because the head gasket was sealed. Probably not torqued right or something. Started to leak. Started to leak. Probably burned through from the ignition. And it's now leaking. Well, a bunch. Congratulations, sir. Here it is. 
the exit we do not show so that people leave us alone. We are pulling off the interstate and headed on to the two lane. Last few miles. Whee! Whee! Wow, there it goes again. That's doing it. Look at the bubbles in the cold water. Hit it. That's your farm right there. That's all the further we gotta go. Well, don't, don't worry about that. That's not real. That's just air. That's that's not the block temperature. It wouldn't be running. There we go. I feel much better. Yeah, look at these gauges. Look at these cute little gauges. took two engines and you're in need of a third but the Impala has finally traveled all 666 miles covered in skulls appropriately and killed two motors with that being said thank you Dalton very much for all of your help this week make sure you guys check out his channel we're about to go do some even wilder dumber more ambitious stuff at our house with a car that he bought last fall and he's gonna drive that rusted GTO all the way back to Kansas City, 250 miles the other way. Yep. In the wind and cold. Great. <laughs> you can tell when I've entered the state of Iowa because everything goes to shit every time. Every time you're here, it's like a storm of some kind. 800 miles an hour wind, tornadoes, hail, every time, blizzards. All of it. Best way to support the channel is check out the merch, junkyarddigs.com. Thank you guys very much for joining us. We'll see you right here next week for another episode. Peace. Hey!